What's up guys, DRock1992 here. Uh, for this next video, and for my next About video, I'm going to be talking about another popular grunge band uh, that probably is, a lot of people would say that this grunge band is the greatest grunge band that ever lived, basically, that ever came around. This grunge band was instrumental in introducing 90s grunge. And, um, this band was a big reason why 90s grunge, why grunge music went mainstream in the 90s. And the band I'm talking about, Nirvana. They're a very good band. Definitely. I, um, you know, I'll be doing a video later as well on Pearl Jam. That video will be coming up. Uh... And I did these videos on account of the order that I like the bands. Alice in Chains came first. I put that video up first because it is my favorite grunge band. Alice in Chains is my favorite. Then Soundgarden. Then Nirvana is my third favorite. And then Pearl Jam is the last one out of the major grunge acts that came out of the 90s. The big four. Um... So, Nirvana, I mean, they're still, I mean, I, re I like their music a lot, you know, their music is very good. They are my third favorite grunge act of the big four. But, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. Nirvana came around in 1987 um, with Kurt Cobain, obviously Kurt Cobain, the most known member of Nirvana, uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, um, he started off with the band in 1987. Then Chris Novoselic, who's like probably the most underrated member. He was the most underrated member of Nirvana. Uh, he was the bass. Uh, Kurt Cobain, of course, was the uh, lead lead vocalist for Nirvana, obviously. And um, he also handled guitar duties. Kurt Novoselic handled bass duties, accordion, and backing vocals. Early on in their history for drums, they actually had a lot of turnover. They had, before Dave Grohl joined the band in 1990, they had six different drummers join the band for very short uh, instances of time. For very short periods of time until Dave Grohl joined the band in 1990. So for five years out of their eight years as a band... You had um, the same three guys. Again, another, like a Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, not a ton of turnover for the majority of their history. But, um, <clears throat> so Nirvana came around, and, you know, originally they, uh, they were trying to get their voice out there, definitely. Um, their first album came in 1989, a couple of years after they formed. And that was called Bleach. And uh, Bleach didn't make much of an impact on the Billboard 200. It only went number 89. And But later on, I think later on as they got more popular, it is a platinum album. But just one you know, platinum album over a million copies. So... Definitely, there's no doubt about it, Bleach was just an attempt from them to get their voice out there. Um, two singles were released off of, Nir off of the first album, a song called Love Buzz and Blue, which, um, you know, uh, Blue and Love Buzz, about a girl is another song on there. Actually, I believe I have that song on my iPod. It's a... If I remember... You know, I think I remember what the song is. It's it's a good... Um, it's definitely a good song. Uh, one early one, Negative Creep, uh, and uh, uh, many others on that first album. And then the second album of theirs was the big success. I mean, this is what launched Nirvana. This was their breakthrough by a long shot, 1991's Nevermind. 
It hits number one on the Billboard 200. It goes diamond. It's a diamond album, which means it sold over 10 million copies. 10 million copies or more. This was a uh, diamond in the U.S., I mean. Um, but there is no doubt about it. Nirvana was probably one of the first... They were one of the first grunge bands to really make it big in America with the new craze of grunge music. Now, this is now if you look at music history, grunge. This came at a time after hair bands and um, hair bands were starting to decline in the eighties, and um, glam metal started to decline as well. You had popular acts from the 80s and 90s, from the 80s, struggle in the 90s. A lot of them did. And this was largely, pretty much mostly because of grunge. A new type of music, a type of music that entertained a lot of different people. A lot of, uh, you know, to me, grunge carries on the meaning of, you know outsiders in some ways outsiders looking to who, outsiders who don't belong who are ostracized in our world and they look to grunge as that type of music to make them feel better to make them accepted to give them to give them acceptance in a world that's not willing to give them acceptance that's my interpretation of grunge and its fans I could be way off on this, but that's just my interpretation of it. But anyway, back to the album. Nevermind is just a was just a huge success when it came out. Everybody knows the cover of the the album cover, the baby in the water with the dollar bill. I mean, their biggest hit, "Smells Like Teen Spirit," came out of this album. They had four singles. All of them very good. Smells Like Teen Spirit, which is probably one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite Nirvana songs. It definitely is up there. Come As You Are is a very good song. The second single released. The third single released was Lithium, which I do know the song, and it's definitely good. And then number four is In Bloom. That also came out on this album. Uh, some other songs. Let's see if there's any others here. Uh, Polly, pretty underrated, uh, pretty underrated song to me, but I also have that song, um, and I liked it a lot, definitely, but, uh, uh Polly, another one, and anyway, what this album did for music in general, as well as grunge music, was really, uh, mind-blowing. So how do you follow up a success like Nevermind, an album that went diamond, mind you, and hit number one? Their third and final album came out in 1993, In Utero, and it was another big hit, too. It hit number one on the Billboard 200, and although it only went five times platinum, that's nothing to sniff, that's nothing to scoff at. I mean, that is just another big success. Um, In Utero, you know, produced three singles. Heart Shaped Box, which is one of their best known hits besides Smells Like Teen Spirit. All Apologies, and then the B single to it, Rate Me. Uh, which are very good songs on their own right. And um, I don't think I have heard... Actually... What they did, the third single that was released and then canceled after the unfortunate circumstances that I'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, the third single actually was released and then it was canceled. It was re-released later, just last year, and it hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, which is, I'll say it right now, Nirvana's only number one hit. Uh... But obviously, well, first of all, you know, all those songs were on, were singles. Dumb is also a good song off the album as well. Um, just a couple of them right there that uh, I definitely liked, you know. 
that I definitely like off that album. Uh, but then obviously, of course, everybody knows what happened. So I'll make the I'll make it short and sweet. You're short and well, not short and sweet, obviously, but everybody. But anyway, everybody knows what happened. Kurt Cobain, obviously, unfortunately, was throughout his career in Nirvana. He was a very lost soul. He he just couldn't really find his way, and he didn't really know how to handle that. He hated his success. I mean. I, I've read somewhere that he definitely, he wasn't comfortable with all that fame that came all of a sudden in 1991. I mean, when grunge hit so quickly, so unbelievably, and when Nirvana was at the forefront of it, he just didn't really, he wasn't comfortable with it. Uh, here's a guy, too, that, was, that had a rough childhood. He, I mean rough childhood he was into drugs and all that kind of stuff um i, be I believe he was you know he, he used a little bit and um and he was a depressed individual obviously 1994 comes around and we all know the story i mean he committed suicide and nirvana as a result disbanded you know dave i think Grohl, dave Grohl. Um, and Kurt Novoselic, Chris Novoselic came together and they just came to a band decision that it wasn't right to go on without Kurt Cobain. So basically, uh, that's that. I mean, he died. There is, um, I mean, but obviously his music still lives on. The music he brought to millions of people all around the world, it still lives on. He is still the voice. I mean, he is still, he is probably the voice of grunge. No disrespect to, um, to, oh, uh, I just said, I, I just mentioned his name, too. Uh, uh, not, I gotta look this up, uh. Let me see here. Uh, Chris Cornell. No disrespect to Chris Cornell, who, of course, as I mentioned, he um, he was the lead vocalist of Soundgarden. But Kurt Cobain definitely was the voice of grunge. Definitely. When you think of grunge music, you think of Nirvana and you think of Kurt Cobain. So anyway, with the loss of um, Kurt Cobain and the breaking up of Nirvana... The bandmates, I don't know really what happened to Novoselic, but we, but to a lot of rock fans, we know what happened to Dave Grohl. He went on to form Foo Fighters, which I probably will talk about coming up, you know, because I am a fan. I like Foo Fighters, um, but Grohl went on to form Foo Fighters, Novoselic, I don't really know what he did, per se. I mean, he just he just didn't find individual success for himself after Nirvana, whereas Grohl did. But that's pretty much the story. Um, one other thing, I mean, there was a. This is kind of worth mentioning. 1994. This was before Cobain passed away. Um, they did an MTV Unplugged. And that turned out, which basically was acoustic renderings of their hits. And that was a big success as well. That was a big time success. Um, every A lot of people probably watched on TV, MTV Unplugged, and watched Kurt Cobain perform his hits in a slower, uh, at a slower tempo, which basically was... Um, was acoustic. Also something worth mentioning as well before I uh, end the video would be uh, his album, his compilation album, Nirvana's compilation album, Insecticide. 
that also there's a song on there that I have that I and I need to mention that I really like. It is a short song, and it is called "Been a Son." Uh, anyway, a very good song on the on the album. Uh, it's a very short song, uh, "Been a Son." It's under two minutes, but it's definitely it's fast paced. I think it's an outstanding example of grunge itself as an art form, and um, I just wanted to mention that song as well. But uh, that's pretty much it for my discussion about Nirvana. A short history, obviously a tragic passing for Kurt Cobain, but his music still lives on and Nirvana still lives on today. So that's the big thing. And uh, a lot of people out there, fans of Nirvana, a lot of people of this generation are still fans, are fans, are discovering Nirvana, and um, just a lot of people love the music and love the message behind the music and the message that Kurt Cobain did bring. And um, it's a beautiful thing. But uh, that's it for this video. D-Rock 1992 out.